Hey, my name is uh, Joseph Dozier. I am the location pastor here. It is such an honor to be with you this morning. Uh, I get to have the uh, privilege of bringing the word this morning. So uh, I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Uh, who has your Bibles with you? And, it, it, do you have your Bibles with you this morning? Come on, go ahead and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 25. Paul says this. Therefore, having put away all falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin, and do not let the sun go down on your anger, and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor doing honest work with his own hands, so that we may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. I want you to circle that. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Chapter 5, verse 1 Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. If you're taking notes, I'm going to title this talk, Embracing This New Life. Embracing the new life. Let's pray. Jesus, we embrace this new life that you have for us. Just pray that you speak to us, you encourage us, you draw us closer to you. And God, we just thank you that football season is back, but God, I pray for I pray for hearts that get disappointed today, especially myself, because we could lose tonight. But you're good. You're always on the throne, and I thank you, because you are my Savior. My Dallas Cowboys are now my Savior, and I own that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, I, I'm just managing my expectations, you know. I just, they just rip your heart out every year, and so just managing my expectations for the year. How about that Texas Alabama game last night? That was crazy. I was hoping for an upset, but it's okay. It's okay. Um, I remember when I was in high school, and in that season of my life, I was comparing myself to everyone that was in the hallway and comparing myself to a lot of people. I was very insecure. One of the reasons why I was insecure was because I, I, I couldn't buy clothes for myself. I couldn't buy things for myself. And I had to rely on my chores that I did around the house. And, you know, chores don't cost much around the house, but, you know, it, it was something. But once I graduated from high school, and uh, I ended up getting my first job. I did try a lot. Of, I did try a lot to get jobs. Okay, I, I want you to want you to know I wasn't trying to be lazy. It just happened to be like that. I was very upset. But I ended up getting a job at Buffalo Wild Wings here in Williamsburg. And and once my first check came in, I was like, yes, I'm buying some new clothes. It was awesome. And uh, once I once I got my fresh gear, just something changed. I remember I was over at my friend's house. And they even noticed it. They were like, hey, Joseph, you got this glow about yourself. And I'm like, I wish it was Jesus, but, you know, it's just my new gear that I got on, you know. <laughs> like, I, I could finally buy stuff for myself. But uh, that glow went away over time because how many of you know material things don't last and, and, and they, they don't satisfy the soul. They don't, they don't satisfy everything in your life. And only, actually, really, only Jesus can. And I... As I was reflecting on that story, I was just remembering the, the verse in Matthew chapter 23. I, I think it's chapter 23, uh, verse 
20, 27, Jesus says this about the Pharisees. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like wash, whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous before others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and, and lawlessness. And so Jesus says, hey, you look amazing on the outside, but really what's on the inside is not what I, I would like to see. What, what happens on the outside, see, see uh, we all like to appear beautiful on the outside. We all like to appear as if we're, 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 we're great people on the outside, but really on the inside, there's something dark within us. There's something negative within us. And at that moment when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he was trying to point out to them, it's not just about you looking beautiful. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what you're actually wearing. Do the people who know you behind closed doors actually know you? You see, you may look great on the outside to all these outsiders who don't know you behind the scenes, but on the inside, that's what really matters. Because what's on the inside will come out on the outside. You see, what happens on the inside will come out on the outside. And what was satisfying these people, and even myself when I was young, it was, man, I was satisfying in the wrong things. I was being finding my peace in the wrong things. I was finding my joy in the wrong things. But we serve a God that knows everything, and he knows what will give us peace. He knows what will give us satisfaction, and he knows what will give us joy. But oftentimes we ignore that. Oftentimes we ignore Jesus. Oftentimes we ignore what God has done for us, and we start to abandon what Jesus actually has done for us. And so this morning, I want to talk about how we can actually find joy in Jesus, find joy in what he has done. You see, I love Paul's letters because Paul's all, Paul always, if you don't know who Paul is, this is a man that, that uh, persecuted Christians, and he was ruthless, and he would even say to himself, he, he wrote this about himself, he's the chief of sinners, and then he encountered Jesus and had a transformation. He had a new, new way of life. He had a new way of thinking. He had a new way of being. And once he encountered Jesus, he just had to spread the good news all across the world to anybody who he needed to come across. And so he's talking to a church that's in Ephesus, and he's saying, or when he, when he speaks, uh, when, he, when he writes in his letters, he always starts with the gospel. He always preaches the gospel to remind people of what Jesus has done. And so that's what I want to do today. I want to start with Jesus. I want to start with what Jesus actually did. You see, Ephesians 2.8, it says, It is by grace you have been saved through faith. Paul wrote this earlier in this, in this letter. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, not of your own works, so that no man can boast. You see, we never or we never did anything or can do anything to receive this grace. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to buy it. And yet, Jesus laid down his life so that we could just receive it. You see, Jesus saw, saw humanity in sin, and, and he saw wickedness and evilness, and he said, I have to do something about it. And he left the throne room of heaven and came down to earth to be the sacrifice, the blameless one to give us life, eternal life, freedom, and, 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 and peace and joy. And Jesus did that, not because we were good. In Ephesians 2, Paul even says, while we were yet enemies... Jesus died. While we were yet enemies, Jesus died. Jesus died while we were yet enemies. How many of us can raise our hand and say, I will lay down my life for my enemy? None of us can. Because Jesus went out his way to say, I, 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 I see value. I put value in you. I actually have the breath of, uh, you have the breath of God in your lungs. 
He made you. He created you. He said, Paul says, while you were yet sinners, Jesus died on the cross. But not, not only did he die, but he rose again in three days. We don't serve a God. We don't serve a person. We don't serve a good teacher. We don't just serve a good prophet. We serve the God of all who actually rose again from the dead. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And so now we have life. And now uh, with that resurrection power, Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us a spirit that would be our helper. Jesus promised us a spirit that would give us power to overcome the enemy, to overcome our old ways, to overcome our old selves. And so Jesus gave us a promise, and we find in Acts chapter 2 that that promise was fulfilled when the disciples preached the gospel and 3,000 people gave their life to Jesus. That promise, that promise was fulfilled because Jesus died on the cross and rose again for you and I. And guess what? That same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives within you and I. That same power that rose Jesus from the grave lives within you and I. And I love what Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says. Paul says this. Now to whom it, who is able to do more than what you could imagine, think, according to the power at work within us. Look at that. It's according to the power at work within us. God is able to do more abundantly than all that we ask or think because of the power that's working within us. See, the Spirit of God is supposed to be working within us. The Spirit of God is supposed to be transforming us. The Spirit of God is supposed to be renewing us and, and, and making us new. And, and we're supposed to take up the, the, the challenge or, or, or the steps of faith to say, you know what, I'm going to put off my old self and I'm going to put on my new self. I'm going to put on this new life that Jesus died on the cross for. But yet... Some of us choose to abandon that life. Some of us choose to come on a Sunday morning or in a connect group and we're just so high off of the music and the, and the word and then on our Mondays through our Saturdays, Jesus is nowhere present. But that power is supposed to be working within you. That power is supposed to be working within you, transforming you, making you different, making you whole, making you set apart from what you were, who you were, and that old lifestyle that you, you said, I'm walking away from. And that's where I want to get to grieving the Holy Spirit. Because all of my life, I've heard so much about God's anger, so much about God's wrath. And that's true. But a revelation happened when I realized, man, grieve the Holy Spirit. What, is, what does that mean? Like, I've, all, I've always heard that. And, and maybe someone taught me that the right way. And I just probably just ignored it and said, okay, fine. You know, who cares? Uh, but grieving the Holy Spirit, I always thought it was just suppressing what God wants to do in like a church service. But it was actually... When, when I went back, the, the Greek word is lepeo and actually means to bring despair or distress. It's, it's sadness. So when Paul says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, he's saying, don't make the Holy Spirit sad. What? I can make the Holy Spirit sad? I thought I could only make him angry or mad. And, and how many of you know if, if, if one is mad or angry, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, my 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 outlook or my 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 temperament my my temperament changes. So if you're mad or you're angry, like I don't care, like you can you can go ahead and be mad, you can go ahead and be angry, because I'm going to match that with you, you know. But if someone's sad, I'm like, man, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't I didn't mean to do that. Oh, you're sad. I have a I have two children. And uh, one is three and one is one. And my, my daughter, Brighton, she, 
Uh, I've spoken about her so many times on this platform saying that she could do no wrong, she's perfect, but now she's in a stage where she's doing all the wrong and she's not perfect at all. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she's, she's just at a stage where I'm just like trying to embrace her, like give me a hug. You know, some days when I walk into the house, She's like, Daddy, welcome home. I'm so glad to see you. I'm like, yes, I'm home. Give me a hug. Give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. And then there are other days where I walk in the house. She's like, hey, what's up? Good to see you. I'm like, give me a hug. She's like, no, I don't want to. Even last night, even last night before she went to bed, <laughs> last night before, I was like, right, give me a hug. Give me a kiss. She's like, no, no, I don't want one. I don't want one. And, and because I had Bell's palsy, uh, I, hit my, I hit my eye on her shoulder, and I was like, oh, shoot, okay, I'm just going to walk away because you're going to make me really mad, okay? But I was sad. I wasn't mad. I was sad that she's not embracing my love. I'm sad that she's not allow allowing me to comfort her or encourage her or build her up and just show her my love. I'm not mad, you know. The other day, I, the other day she, I walked in, and, and then my wife, Rena, she was like, no, Brighton, you got to give her, you got to give him a hug, you got to give him a kiss. And I was like, no, no, I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to force myself on her, but I will allow her to do that. But it is sad to me when that happens. It's sad. And I think it's the same way with the Holy Spirit when it comes to our life in our lifestyle. It's sad that you're choosing your old life. And it's sad that I know it's been one of those days where you're choosing to pick up that bottle that we put down years ago. Man, it's sad that you're choosing to be bitter. It's sad that you're choosing to hold, have malice in your heart. It's sad to me that you have hate in your heart. It's sad. I'm just sad. I'm, I'm just sad because you're choosing your old life over the life I actually died for. And I don't know about you. When I read that, I was like, I was like, dude, Holy Spirit, what is, I can make God sad? Man, I don't want to do that. I want to make the Holy Spirit, I want to make God joyful. I want him to be proud of me. I love what this, uh, this person says about this, this, is, this is really good when I read it. It said, it's important to know this because it's a reminder that the triune God is personal and that his spirit who dwells among his people is not an impersonal wind or power, but a person. It's a person. I want to make God joyful. I want to make God happy. I don't want to make the Holy Spirit sad. But yet, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I just make the Holy Spirit sad. And I know I can make him angry and, and mad, but really it's more of a sadness. And that's what I, that's what I want to hone in on today, like sadness. What if we chose to see that we could actually make God joyful instead of sad? What does that look like? What does it look like for us, for the Holy Spirit to be proud and joyful? I, you just, I think you just work backwards. Okay, if I'm having malice or hate or bitterness in my heart and I'm choosing that, what if I actually chose kindness? What if I chose love? What, I, what if I chose to forgive? Then that's making the Holy Spirit joyful because Paul says, put on your new life. Take off your old way of life. Put on your new life. You see, this new life that you are in, yes, I know that people get on your nerves. I know that you have a boss that's out to get you. I know that you are in a relationship that is stale, but you got to keep on forgiving. You got to keep on being kind. You got to keep on being gentle. You got to keep on doing this new way of life because that's how we imitate God. That's how we imitate Jesus. By putting on this new way of life, I'm saying to myself, I'm choosing to be kind today instead of bitter. 
I'm choosing to be gentle today instead of harsh. I'm choosing to forgive instead of have unforgiveness. And you see, I think what makes the Holy Spirit excited and joyful is when I think of like a tag team match in WWE. I just thought about this. It was funny. Like, have you, you know, when, uh, you know, when it's just like, I don't know if everyone's seen it. It's, 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 I know it's fake. It's just entertainment, but it's awesome at the same time. But I uh, haven't seen it in a while. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's those moments where it's getting very intense and, and the, uh, the opponent is just, it's just trampling on, on, on the other person, and, and then your tag team partner is just like, I'm right here, just tag me and tag me and tag me. And then, they, and then all of a sudden, all of these emotions, they tag him in. The, the, the guy comes in, and he starts just beating up on this person, and they, 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 just the momentum shift and everything has changed. And I believe that's what the Holy Spirit wants, for us to say, okay, Holy Spirit, help me today. I, I'm tagging you in today. God, I don't know if I can be kind, but I I need you today. Holy Spirit, I, I don't know if I can forgive my neighbor, but I need you to help me today. And that's when the Holy Spirit gets excited. Finally, you are calling me in. You are calling me to be a part of your life. You are calling me to be a part of what you want to do because that is what I'm actually called to do. I'm called to be your helper. I'm called to be your friend. I'm called to be your strength in your weakness. I'm called to do what you need me to do. Don't abandon me. Make me joyful. So tag me in. Tag me in. See, the Holy Spirit wants to come in and, and change you and transform you and, 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 and show the fruit that Jesus actually did die on the cross. And we actually believe in it. We walk in it. See, the Holy Spirit's just like, ah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to step in. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life. Thank you for not putting me on the back burner, but in speaking the name of Jesus and tagging me in. Tag me in. Tag me in. Tag me in. Whenever you're in distress, Holy Spirit, I need you to do this. I remember I was on a walk last week, and I, I read this passage right before my walk, and I said, God, I really don't know if I can be kind to this person. I don't know if I can be gentle, and I don't know if, if I can forgive this person. I really can't. Like, I'm just ready to throw in the towel. And that's Probably some of us, when we read the Bible, like we, we read it and, and we see that God's really calling us to, to, to do something. We know when we sit down and we know it's like from God, okay, God, you're speaking to me about this situation, uh, but I, I just can't do it. I just can't. And can we be honest in the room? That's some of us in the room. I know that's me for sure because I, I was battling with this passage of scripture when it said be kind be gentle be forgiving and I said I just don't know if I can do it God I don't know I don't know if I can do this I don't know if I can carry this out but could you help me you see that's the shift that we need to take in our life God I don't know if I could do this but could you help me Holy Spirit because you said you are my helper. You are working within me. You are the power that's working within me. I don't want to forgive my spouse today, but could you help me to forgive my spouse today? I, I don't want to be kind to my coworker that, that is literally boasting and bragging about their accomplishments, but could you help me celebrate their wins? I, I don't, I, I, I really feel like being bitter because I feel like I get taken advantage of all of the time, but I just, I just don't know how to put on this new way of life of not being bitter, of actually, actually being grateful. I don't know if I can do that, God. But could you help me? Could you help me? What if that was our mentality Church, could you help me, God? God, I'm struggling in this area, but could you help me? 
I'm really falling short in this area. Could you help me? Because at the end of the day, Paul says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And most of us grieve the Holy Spirit. We, we, we make the Holy Spirit sad because we're choosing to abandon what God had for us and has for us. And I think when we say, yes, okay, help me, strengthen me, be my peace, walk with me, walk with me through this hardship that I'm actually going through. Can you, can you help me to love my parents? Can, can you just help me? I just believe that just something changes and the Holy Spirit just comes upon you and it, it just gives you new life and it gives you new perspective and it gives you this, 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 this mentality to say, you know what, I'm going to imitate Jesus. I'm going to imitate Jesus because I want the Holy Spirit to be joyful. I want God to be glad. And again, I know I can't do anything. I know I can't do anything, and I know I fall short, but it's those moments when we realize, you know what? God help me. God help me. Because some of us, we can just read the word, and we're saying, nope, I'm not doing that today. Can't do it. I can't do that. God, you're on your own. I'm going to just keep putting on this new way of life. But the shift, like I just said, it's the shift to say, God, I'm allowing you to transform me and help me. I'm allowing you to transform and help me. I'm embracing this new life. Team, you can come back up. I'm allowing you to transform me and help me. I'm allowing you to do something new within my life. I'm allowing you to 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 make me new. I'm, I'm allowing you to help me to love. I'm, I'm allowing you to help me not to be bitter. I'm allowing you to, to just do this in my life. I'm allowing you to do this. And so in those moments where you're struggling, when you're having hardship, like we just sang, you can just speak the name of Jesus. You can just speak the name of Jesus. And if you have no words to say, you can just continue to repeat his name over and over and over again. And what it looks like is this, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God, I'm struggling. I need you, Jesus. God, I want to imitate you, but I need you, Holy Spirit. I need you, Jesus. I need you to step into my situation. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because that's when we see God in a new way, when we take on our new selves and we say, God, I trust you in my business. I trust you in my relationships. I trust you in my all. I trust you with my finances. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I may not see it. I may have a hard time doing it. But God, I'm trusting you to help. I'm trusting you, Holy Spirit, to walk with me and, and do your work that you are called to do. You're called to help me. You're called to be my power. You're called to strengthen me. You are called to do this for me. So, God, I'm trusting you. I believe you can do it. Change me, God. Change me from the inside out. Yes, I may have it all together on the outside. Yes, I may be the most popular person at my school. Or yes, I may be the CEO of my business. But God, none of that matters. The only thing that matters is what you are actually doing within my life. The only thing that matters is the power that is working within me so I can imitate you to the world because we live in a world that is lost. We live in a world that is in a dark place. And we live in a world that just needs the light. And I just want to be the light to those and I want to be the
the joy to those. I want to be different. I want to be set apart. I know people are gossiping, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually going to be kind. I'm actually going to rejoice at what people are going to do. I'm actually going to continue to take on the step of faith to know that you are walking within me into this office. I know that this person right here may be getting on my nerves, but I'm going to rejoice at the fact that they are right here right now and I get to change their life. I'm in their life for a season. I'm in their life for a reason. And God, you changed me and God, you can change them as well. And so God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to uh, I'm going to have my strength in you and I'm going to continue to put my faith in you. I'm going to put my faith in you. That is the work that Jesus is doing in us. We're different. We're changed. We choose love instead of hate. We choose forgiveness instead of unforgiveness. We put off all bitterness, all malice, all everything that is evil and wicked and we choose to put on Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. So could you all stand with me this morning? It's such an honor to just preach the word of God because it really has changed my life. I look over time, I'm like, God, man, you have done a work in my life. Thank you. I just want us to just, every head bowed, every head closed, can we just reflect on how God, if, if you do believe in Jesus, can you just reflect on how God has done a work in your life and how you've been, you've, you've been different over the span of a week or a month or a year? Look at where God is taking you today. Where were you 10 years ago? Where were you 20 years ago? Where were you 30 years ago? God is doing a work in you. And he wants to continue to do a work in you. And for those who don't know Jesus, for those who don't believe in Jesus and not yet follow him, this is your invitation to believe and to receive what he has for your life. And so... I want to encourage you to raise your hand on the count of three because God has a purpose for your life. God has new, new life for your life. But this is a moment where you can say, yes, I choose to follow you. And when you choose to make that decision to follow Jesus, he's going to transform you. He's going to work within you. But not only that, he died on the cross for you died for you because he loves you and he rose again so that you could have new life so if you want to give your life to Jesus today you want to make the decision to follow him I just want you to raise your hand raise your hand on the count of three one two three that's you go ahead and raise your hand thank you Jesus I see that hand thank you God I see that hand in the back thank you Jesus I see these hands right here thank you Jesus rush this moment. If that's you, raise your hand up high. I want to know who I'm praying for this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Church, can we just give them a round of applause one more time? Amen. Welcome home. If you made that decision, we want to encourage you to tell someone. I want to invite up a prayer team right here down at the front. Now is a great time to tell someone you gave your life to Jesus, but also they can pray for you as well. We're going to pray in just a moment. Grab a Bible because we want to resource you and get connected to a local church. It doesn't have to be our church, but just get into a church that is all about Jesus and the word of God. Let's pray together. Repeat this after me. Jesus. Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. That you are Lord. That you are Lord. And now I'm saved. And now I am saved. I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. In and Jesus all the glory. Name. In Jesus' Amen. name.